ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Nice to be here. Guys, everyone happy? Uh, welcome. Blockchain WA is now officially opening. It takes a lot to put on these events and already with day one we've got a lot of support, so you know, here we go. Um, what is Blockchain WA? Blockchain WA is determined to, uh, to make Perth and WA the blockchain capital of Australia. So how do we do that? We have more registered blockchain companies here in WA, we have more staff employed in those blockchain companies and we have more investment going into those blockchain companies. So 18 months ago, we did it with PropTech Hub WA. Uh, we now have 54 property and construction technology members, market cap of over 15 billion, over 200 industry members with market cap over 300 billion, and now we really want to do this with blockchain. I think it's time, um, and there's obviously a great community in here that's uh, going to get behind it and see where it goes. Blockchain uh, technology for different industries and how it can be applicable to energy and resources, news, entertainment, education, space and defence, transport, logistics, health, construction uh, and global trade and really seeing what those industries can do and, and, and the blockchain technology and how it can be adopted into those industries is what's exciting. Um, and throughout this year we do have an industry summer plan where we'll bring industry in and, and really start to get creative. Um, as well as our, our Phaeton Blockathon, which is a whole day experience of, of getting people around and starting to solve some problems. It's all about helping uh, blockchain companies get their piece of the pie and, and connect with industry and grow here in Perth, rather than having to see capital on the east or, or overseas and creating a really good community here. 
Blockchain WA policies, um, you know, building awareness for blockchain companies, acknowledging them. So in August we'll have uh, our Orange Brick Road Blockchain WA Awards, which we'll get into later. We've got a great announcement for that. Um, and then some advocacy with government and industry and getting everyone around. So stay tuned, there's some pretty exciting things happening. Upcoming events, we have our GFE Blockchain Summit, which we um, touched on on Wednesday, July. Uh, Orange Brick Road Awards is on the 24th of August. Phaeton Blockathon is October 5th. And then um, this year we're actually able to get Blockchain WA into West Tech Festival. And West Tech Festival is the biggest tech conference uh, in WA. And the state government this year are putting 300,000 in and 200,000 in next year. So it's just going to grow and grow and become something pretty impressive. Um, the community is going to be quite simple, 600 bucks an innovator or an industry member getting around, using this space, um, collaborating together and, and really building um, some stuff around it. We can't wait to share some, some, some stuff about that and what we're going to be doing. Uh, and then we have some uh, major partnerships also available with some naming rights and some really exciting things. Um, so if anyone is in there that wants to be part of the community and um, part of the steering committee and, and all of that, please talk to Johnny. Today, we've got uh, 14 presenters. Uh, they all have three minutes each and there is a bell over there and we're going to kick them off in three minutes. Okay, so they've got three minutes to share what they're all about. Um, when we did this with PropTech 18 months ago, we had eight and we had a list of 14. The community here of blockchain companies is absolutely phenomenal um, and it's extremely exciting. So, so really thank you very much um, for coming and, and for the presenters wanting to be involved in this. I'm not going to go through this, this list. We're just going to start with Johnny um, and, and his story of how he started up Blockchain Perth. So if I can get Johnny, you're up mate. You've got three minutes which I know is going to be hard for you. Guys, I did not prepare a speech because you guys are my speech. You guys will say everything we need to know. All I know is five years ago, on the 2nd of February 2017, I started Blockchain Perth, wanting to be a voice to the community. Uh, we had our first birthday party, we had our second birthday party, and then COVID came. And it ripped us almost apart. But we're back and we're stronger. Today we have more than 40 blockchain and crypto companies. Yeah, we have uh, some of the leaders, uh, Leo Treasure, he runs Tezos. Uh, we've got uh, Peter Young from Innovate Australia. We've got a couple of blockchain lawyers. We've got everything we need. But as one, if you go to the press, if you go to the Chamber of Commerce, if you go to the government, they say, oh, just another crypto company. What are they going to do? But if we carry a voice and we carry it together, we can change things because WA is at the forefront of this technology. We have everything we need here, from governance to gaming to everything. There are three billion gamers in the world. Blockchain companies here with gaming, yes, we got that. Governance, we got that. Electricity, we've got everything. Property, we've got the works. So if we stand together as one voice, we will achieve to bring this mainstream. Because without us taking it to the people outside, it's just going to stay in this room. So we're going to all just be, oh yeah, I'm into blockchain, I'm into crypto. No, we need to pull everyone into this because this is going to change the world. Let's be part of that. So, we are going to have Peter speak so incredibly much. All right, next one. Now, this is, this is an interesting one because you know I actually, she has a few hats, doesn't she? So, is this going to work? Yes, let's bring Julia from um, TechStack, Ocean Point, Whistle, and going to be sharing what all three do. Absolutely amazing. Come up here, let's go.
Um, it's been a, a long journey since we started. It's been a really long journey since we started to run um, blockchain and crypto results here in Perth. Um, basically, we started back in <laughs> we started back in 2016, running Bitcoin Basics. That's also run by Johnny, and um, yes, got involved over the time in several blockchain companies in Perth startups back in the day, especially in 2017 and 2018. The industry was very small in Perth, and everyone needed skilled professionals who could help them on their journey. For example, a lawyer. So in 2017, I think there was exactly one lawyer in Perth who understood blockchain and the legalities of crypto. He stands over there, and I think all startups in Perth just ran to him. Josh, <laughs> and um, uh, he, he made his name uh, very early in the day in the, in the, in the blockchain industry in Perth. Um, however, what we discovered back then was it was very hard to find um, skilled people to, to actually uh, create startups and innovate industries. So um, we formed a company in 2018 called Techstack, and we decided to develop CBD approved trainings. Um, so we had to work on regulators to actually um, get blockchain education approved here for Western Australia. So we started with lawyers, so we got the first approval for, from the uh, Legal Practice Board of WA um, teaching uh, blockchain and smart contracts. Um, and then um, after working myself and some of the team members in the uh, property technology industry, uh, developing technologies like Whistle, uh, which is a um, community management platform for building management, um, we decided, okay, uh, there's a massive market in the property tech space and we need to educate the real estate agent, the real estate professional here in Perth to actually adopt what we're doing. And um, so we made, formed a partnership with Riva and we worked for one year on a DEMERS, the Department of uh, Mines Industry Regulations and Security in Perth to get our courses uh, simply approved. Um, and we are really yeah, happy about um, the result that so far we educated over 210 real estate agents here in person in September last year. Um, also about tokenization of real estate, and for that we're using, um, we partnered up with Ocean Point, um, which is a web free application platform to, um, for tokenize real estate and make uh, real estate investments as well as um, yeah, accessible basically for everyone, even the small investor who just has 100 bucks and you know, can't get a mortgage from the bank. Why do you think that? Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> All right. Next, guess what? Jason from Babylon is stuck in traffic apparently, so skip. Big Baz, Scarlet Global. <laughs> Big supporter of this space. Um, mate, thank you. Can't wait to see what you do. First time on stage. It's <laughs> <laughs> coffee over here. <laughs> but, uh, right, yeah, welcome everyone. It's, it's nice to see you all here. I've uh, been involved in crypto, funnily enough, first learning about it, sitting in Siberia in Russia, watching the only English channel uh, talking about Bitcoin back in about 2012. And uh, funnily enough, came back to Perth and it was in the Sunday Times, Bitcoin at 30 bucks, and I thought I might as well just, you know, listen to these idiots and have a crack. Um, anyway, along the way, having lost most of it to different scams like Plex and whatnot that you'd find out there, um, and having a, I have a master's in psychotherapy, so I have a huge uh, team of friends around the world. Um, got together with a few of the IT guys and we developed Scarlet Global. Uh, it has everything on there, is, I guess similar to a MetaMask, it has your e-wallet, you can move your crypto onto there, um, you can store, we, you can purchase the Scarlet token. That has some um, early uses, so we have an NFT marketplace that you can post. Uh, posting all your NFTs, for whether it be real estate, so a bit like how uh, Julie was going on. Um, in that line of, of tokenizing real estate. 
and uh, we're, pro we're probably about a month away from having a social media wall live. So I believe in, at least in Australia, we'll be the first and only social media platform of post to earn. So you'll be able to post to earn some Scarlet tokens and then swap them over to, to BNB as, as the infrastructure builds. So we're almost there. I've also got Dr. NFT, which we've we've merged in Scarlet Global with the NFTs just because of the confusion of it. And we're turning Dr. NFT into a gaming site. So we've completed the NFTs ready um, for the in-game in purchases and it will be a full <coughs> peer peer to peer and uh, play to earn game and we're around about 30% complete well through that infrastructure as well. We're fully self-funded so if you guys would like to jump on and, and buy some scale tokens it'd be much appreciated. And uh, yeah and is that three minutes yet? Yeah? Seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks everybody for coming in today. Um, I'm a ringer actually. Uh, my business partner was supposed to be here to speak today, he's come down with COVID. So I've driven through from Bunbury to present uh, GFE. A bit of background uh, about myself and my business partner. We got into the blockchain business about three years ago, working with other blockchain startup companies around the countryside, selling tokens. We had uh, Sold a lot of tokens of different companies, and then one day we said, Why can't we do this ourselves? So we sat down, and my, my business partner said, Look, I broke something down on paper back in 2016. I said, What is it? He said, This. It was a girlfriend experience. We've expanded on that since then, and we've decided to incorporate all these different things into GFE. Someone said to us um, in the gay community, We love what you're doing, we want to be part of it, but that GFE doesn't represent our community we want to be part of it. So we've now got gay friend experience, gaming experience in a lot of other communities and different governments that's going to support GFE. Um, we've been through a bit of a tough time trying to get um, a non-profit organisation for charity. Uh, we're at the final stage of signing that off, so everything we make through these at different apps and websites, we're going to donate 10% to different charities that we feel are suited uh, to uh, the GFE program. Um, we're also looking at uh, getting into different forms of shops and online shopping. One of those is we're looking at, uh, we are going to be going through with Gucci and Louis Vuitton and different high profile uh, fashion um, uh, labels, purely so our people can actually buy with their tokens or Bitcoin different fashion items as well as fans can also buy different items as well. Um, we're also looking at uh, Different items, we're looking at the five hand smart chain at the moment. We're also looking at wrapping coin on Eurythium. And then we've just been approached recently by an American crypto token. Um, and they're looking at sponsoring us and giving us quite a bit of money if we go down their path. So, very early stages yet. Um, any questions? No, good, thank you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, early days, we kicked off on the 2nd of April, not the 1st of April, because the 1st of April is April Fool's Day, so we decided the 2nd of April. You're out. That was pretty uh, good. <laughs> Alright. The next Ron Forley is uh, coming up, or someone else, no? Ron? Alright, from Phaeton. Thanks, Al. Thank uh, we were, Phaeton was part of the PropTech Hub when it initiated a few years ago and I must compliment Ash and Johnny for innovation of this uh, blockchain WA. It's to see that it started off with uh, PropTech and with 80, but now we've got 80 to start off with this phenomenon. I think we're going to grow quite significantly. So yeah, we're Phaeton. Um, Phaeton is a social enterprise, or what I say, a social impact blockchain. We focus on creating a green blockchain. So what does it mean? We typically a blockchain platform, typical like Cardano or Ethereum. We have those digital sources, but we've gone a step further. 
The big problem you find in blockchain at the moment, it burns up a lot of energy. So being a social enterprise, we focus on creating what we call um, social, um, what we call it, governance type, uh, ESG, sorry, I was looking for the word, ESG infrastructure, which is headed by a threat of standing over there hiding away. So what is infrastructure? It's about creating a green blockchain. It supports the blockchain digital side of, of that. So what we do, we create data centers. Blockchain is about data, it's a collection of data. Secondly, we add that element, what we call renewable energy. So we do microgrids that support the data center, right? And then further than that, we can get involved in smarter communities where it originated with affordable housing. So we're currently doing a project where we're doing an enhancement of those elements. It's a project we're doing in Mandurah, it's called Spider Communities. And inside of that, we've got NDIs, medical centers, and co-living. But what we add to that, we've got solar that drives a data center. So the project involves typically anything to do with blockchain. So we finance the initial seed capital through a hub, through passive income. So investors come in, get a passive income, it enhances that. Then we go into real estate NFTs for equity. Then we've got a bond market that creates a debt. When it's completed, what it does, we've got the data center that has nodes. It has a staking model, tenants or people that own real estate now get a passive income. And that helps them with affordability. So that's our core project at the moment. Thank you. He has never, ever been on time. I reckon he deserves another round of applause. <laughs> All right, so the next one we have Liam Peters from Moonpaw. founders of the Moonpool project. Uh, myself and Prima Kira, unfortunately, couldn't make it today, uh, founded Moonpool just last year, in May 2021, as a social impact project to raise money for animal welfare and wildlife conservation charities. Today, we've been able to successfully raise close to 100,000 Australian dollars for animal welfare and wildlife conservation, and a part with around five different charities throughout Australia and the world. Uh, we, are very now, we are now very excited to announce that Moonpool meets up now venturing into the NFT space, and we're going to be announcing an official partnership with Immutable X, the Layer 2 NFT scaling platform. Thank you. Um, as well as offering rapid transactions and near, near zero gas fees, uh, Immutable X is going to be 100% carbon neutral, which is going to be hugely appealing to charities and the general public who may have some concerns around the environmental impact of NFTs. Uh, Moonpool is going to be offering blockchain and NFT consultancy services to charities and social impact projects, helping them launch on the Immutable X platform. And we see this as a great way to get charities involved in blockchain technology, raise funds, foster community, and also help support and give exposure to local Australian artists. Uh, so one of the projects we're going to be helping consult for and we're partnering with is another Perth project, the Rudemont Barbershop. And so I'd like to introduce their team to quickly have a chat about their project. Are there any farmers in the room? Your farmers? Okay, well we've actually got an agroecologist, a scientist, a farmer, Gavin, in the room. He is on our team. We also have Wade here, who is sales and marketing, and myself in operations. We have a team of artists from the southwest. Uh, we also have Moonpaw. Thank you, Moonpaw, for being our developers. So we are here to provide the connective tissue between the metaverse and the living Earth universe, if you can get that. We have a bunch of NFTs for the NFT holders you get to play the real world game of farming regeneratively. It's a gamified system which bridges all the intelligence of people like Gavin here, who have been in his entire career thinking about and helping and make regenerative agriculture a reality for climate change at the very personal level. We have a DAO that will be running. You get to make governance decisions as an NFT holder of Rumal Barbershop about how to restore 
the land. That's the long-term goal. The immediate vision is about getting access to real land. You hear about the metaverse, of, of course, there's metaversal land, but this is land that is here in WA. We plan to start the game that way. You get allocated part of the community portion or part of a VIP portion, and you get to play farmer using the skills of somebody like Gavin Kay. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Zach. I can't wait to play the game. All right. Uh, next one we have Kevin from Layer 1X. Can you make your way up, mate? Your time starts now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, my name is Kevin. Um, actually, I couldn't be more happy and proud to you know, present Layer 1X, uh, being the Australia's first and only Layer 1 blockchain technology and the world's first native interoperable blockchain technology. I started my programming at the age of 8. My parents weren't too happy about it. But um, you know, I founded two IT companies before that and one of them is a listed company today. Applications never made me happy, right? And I said, okay, you know, if Australia is going to be on the list, it has to be through a layer one technology. We started the development of layer one in August 2021. I see Josh looking at me there. He's on the board of layer one. Um, and since then, we've raised a few million dollars and we've launched our testnet version one. But what does layer one actually do, right? So imagine decentralization, right? Applications being built on it. Is Binance, is Ethereum really decentralized? I don't think so. What's the gas fees? Are they interoperable? What we do is we actually take your mobile devices and make interoperability possible from the blockchains in itself. We have partnered up with MME Law, the best legal firm in the world for the setting up the foundation in Zurich. Also, our tokenomics partner is Prism Group. Um, it's pretty hard people to get to, but MME Law helped us with that. Since then, we've launched the testnet version one. And the testnet version 2 is coming up in the next four weeks, which is going to show the first time in the world that six blockchain networks are getting interoperated in less than a second. Layer 0 protocol allows you to do it in four minutes, but it only allows transactions. What we are doing is we are going to take the blockchains in itself and let you communicate instantly without any bridges. We use mobile devices for security, so every device in the world is a validator. There is no proof of stake. You don't have to be a miner. If you have a mobile device, you can validate a transaction. Because we have worked our way around civil attacks in terms of how we can secure the network, not only by putting your money in, but just being a part of the network. Thank you. And the next one is our own elder man from Tax for Planet. Here you go, man. We started around about August last year as a concept, so we're about nine months old. Uh, Tanks for Playing, uh, we're pioneering in social crypto gaming, so our, our game in particular uh, works with you know, game theory and you know, cooperation, collaboration, but ultimately as the game progresses there can only be one winner, um, so there's a bit of betrayal and a bit of you know, backstabbing that needs to occur. So one of the things we uh, identified in the space when we first started was that a lot of crypto games out there were nice, but they didn't. They left a lot of the elements of the traditional gaming space. So a lot of them just weren't fun. They were just kind of grinding, effectively yield farming with extra steps. So we, we wanted to come into this uh, you know environment and come up with a concept that we thought was going to be interesting. Uh, we also did something kind of unique at, at the start. We wanted to run the game entirely on the blockchain. Uh, we chose Polygon as our as our, uh, as our blockchain of choice. Um, it turned out that that was actually not a good choice. Um, you know, Polygon at the moment can be somewhat unusable. If you think about uh, trying to play a game, it's very intense. You know, you're, you're, you're getting towards the end of the game and then suddenly your transaction gets stuck or, you know, Metamoth pops up and it just breaks. Uh, these are kind of the user experience stories that, um, you know, we've experienced and we're definitely moving in a different direction as we head into what we're calling our season two, which is kind of a complete re relaunch of our project. So, you know, we, we, we're still in the early days of blockchain technology and, you know, the usability aspects are still not quite there. Um, you know, the, the fact that it's, it's kind of a niche product, there's a huge barriers to entry. We, we actually want our project to be something that 
uh, helps people get into the blockchain space. So if, if you think about, you know, why would anyone from the outside come and join us? Well, there has to be a use case. It can't just be uh, buying stuff and selling stuff. It actually has to, you know, be part of your normal day-to-day -day, uh, experience. And so one of those would be, oh, I want to play a game. Well, I play a game, I whip up my mobile, I play the game, oh, look, it was all on the blockchain, or, you know, had a blockchain element in there to begin with. So that's one of the things we want to do is we, we actually want to live this experience of what does the world in the blockchain look like and how can we actually make it better. Um, and so we're, we're changing our, our focus to be off-chain, but with integration into the blockchain at, at, at kind of sensible locations. Uh, for season two, we've also got what's called a, a play and earn mechanism. So you can actually get rewarded by playing the game uh, and, and by doing well in the game. And so that's a way that we think that uh, we can uh, basically get more people in, involved in playing the game, uh, create a game that people want to play, as well as uh, make sure that people are having fun along the way and can actually enjoy the crypto experience. And so, you know, uh, we're on the path to launching our NFT tanks and, and a new rewards token. Uh, this is all coming up in the next few months. And yeah, we're hoping to, to see how we go in all of it. And it's a, it's a great experiment. Thank you. And next is Kieran from Railgun, he's not here. And next is Doreen from Scooptix. Hi guys, I was told to speak into the microphone, so if I punch down quite tall, so now you can't hear me, so I'm gonna do like this, okay? Uh, my name is Dory, I work with Scooptix, I'm the business development manager, our CEO is currently in ISO, so I have to take over, it's my first pitch ever, so be kind. Um, at Scooptix we want to disrupt the creator economy with Web3 technology, and you've all heard of YouTube and Spotify and all those big platforms, so at the moment they're taking advantage of all the creators and their hard work and they put their soul into every piece of content that they create, whether it's a video, whether it's music, anything, you know, you name it. Um, so we want to build the foundation that lets creators own their audience instead of the platforms um, that they build on. Alright, so um, we're pretty much targeting two markets, which is the creator economy and the ticketing industry. Uh, a total number of $247 billion Australian. Um, so that's, let that just sink in, because the, the creator economy itself is growing as well significantly. Anyway, I can go into that later in detail. Um, so what we want to do is we want to build accessible Web3 technology to fix the broken ticketing technology, while also giving the power back to creators to turn their passion back into profits that they deserve. But on top of that, we're also building um, technology that lets you relive a moment in time as if you were there. Okay, so just imagine you're going to a concert of anyone that you like. Uh, I'm just going to say Avicii, because I've had this story before, and I love Avicii. But as you know, um, he's no longer here. So just imagine you went to a concert of Avicii, and you want to just go back there, relive that moment, and as you were there, in it back in the day, uh, in person, okay? So we're building that technology. Um, how are we gonna do that? So we have a very strategic go-to-market strategy, so we're working in phases, uh, which means that we're uh, taking, we're onboarding creators and artists at the moment, independent artists, so if you wanna uh, get involved in Web3 technology, uh, talk to us right now. So we're in that phase at the moment, we have phase one. Um, so we wanna create, we wanna uh, build a, creator engagement platform, right? So they can build, um, they can go from ID to smart contract and building NFTs within minutes. Okay, we're currently building that platform, it's about six to eight weeks away. Um, and from that, we want to leverage those customers to go and disrupt the ticketing uh, industry. And from there, we want to take all of that and go and build in the metaverse. Okay, we want to create, um, immersive experiences in the metaverse. I think a lot of people are trying to do that at the moment. Uh, the difference for us is we already have a working product. So the founders have been working on this for two years. And they oh, want to get the Oh, you're going to be busy now. Everyone's going to come to D and say, what's that thing that they're working on? So close. Yeah. All right, next one. Is Miles from Envision. Welcome everyone. Um, 
So yeah, I guess I'll kind of rewind a little bit. It's quite cool for me. I've just uh, come from living and working in London in finance for the last uh, chapter of my life and one of my friends from school reached out since he was a photographer and videographer professionally. He's had his own businesses now for sort of 15 or so years and was having an issue with selling a lot of his, his stock content. So uh, for anyone who isn't familiar with, with stock content, it's basically photos or videos that are used in a range of different applications, whether it's like a, a PR or a marketing campaign or um, a, to fill a gap in a Hollywood production movie, for example. Um, it's just a generic piece of content. So what he was finding was he was selling a lot of his content uh, to say Getty or, or Shutterstock or iStock or any of those sort of platforms. And essentially he was, he was selling the rights to that content uh, and receiving a very small portion of what that content was end up selling for. So it came to me, I've kind of been invested and interested in the blockchain and crypto space for five or six years. Um, came to me and said, look, is, is there maybe a solution or a way that we can leverage the technology and providing a solution that would, would you know, kind of re remove the middleman or, or come up with a way that maybe, you know, we could provide a uni swap buffer stock content. So, Kind of, uh, this was sort of 18 months ago, we started putting together a couple of ideas and it was right around the time that NFTs were really taking off. Um, so I think it's probably a combination of a whole bunch of different things lining up really well that we put a business plan together and essentially founded Envision uh, a little bit over 12 months ago. Quit my job in, in London working in finance, moved back to Perth to, to join the rest of the team. Uh, we co-founded the company, me, Tom and uh, Andre, who has kind of been a creative director, so on the other side of the transaction where he's predominantly been purchasing stock content and was very frustrated by the actual process of purchasing content as well. There's also a lot of issues with um, what that process is and searching it, dragging that into using it in a sort of commercial aspect. Um, so we just thought there, there was a, a massive issue there with stock content that, that we could try and solve and we'd be using blockchain in the, the background. So. Um, kind of fast forward now, 12 months, we've got the company incorporated, um, we've started development, we've got a, basically an MVP that we're about to start releasing over the next uh, couple of months, we've got a token that essentially funds the entire platform, um, so you can think about what we are is we're a decentralised version of Getty Images and we use NFTs and, and smart contracts to provide proof of ownership. Um, so, so basically, if you're a creator, you come to our platform, you upload your content, uh, and if you're a consumer, you come to our platform. Done! 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 Thank you. I'm going to later. And he might be over to one of the sides of the room and he can show you how it all works. Alright, Sam from Ocean Floor Music. You ready? I'll bring Clint with me because uh, Clint loves talking. Um, <laughs> Eddie wants to kick off? Yeah, I'm going to kick off. Hey guys, um, I think co-founder of Ocean Floor Music, my buddy Sam, we'll have, have a chat in a second, that uh, I just re I returned from Florida this week, 40 hour trip back to Perth, went to the Bankless Blockwork uh, conference over there, which was amazing. 5,000 people in the room just as Lunar Terror crash happened. Um, the emotion was stale for about a minute, then everyone was like, you know what, we're here to break Web3, bring in the next billion users, so let's talk about that, and the rest of the conference Yay. was about that. So, happy to chat later about that if you want to learn about that space. And able to meet Alluvium, who I have been the um, advisors on Ocean Floor um, Music for over 18 months now, particularly Danny, um, Danny Wilson, who's the CFO there. So, great to meet those guys and in person for the first time after lockdown. 18 months ago, I also met Sam, and we realised that the music industry has been commoditised the same way for over, eight, um, over hundreds of years now, and where artists earn 13% of revenue globally, and they also get paid last in the cycle of uh, the payment cycle. So we said, hey, let's try and use Web3 to put more cash in the pockets of artists. Over to Sam to tell us about our music. Right. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, the value proposition, that's what it's about. It's about bringing the value of the creation process and the creator economy. Our thing is create and earn, um, where artists get paid at the front rather than at the end. You know, we, we don't sort of, uh, you know, express it very much, but that end of the funnel is getting smaller and smaller all the time. You know, the publishing sort of 
a bucket is getting thinner all the time and there isn't much to be made at the end. So let's bring the money up the front and uh, our whole sort of create to earn uh, model allows artists to do that. Fundamentally, we are a funding body where artists uh, create a smart project fund. That's our core um, little um, uh, technology. Um, these funds build over time, they come to maturity, they get unlocked, they go into our music marketplace where artists come together with industry. So there's a whole development process for artists as well. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey these last couple of years, funding the whole process. We, uh, we raised $2 million late last year, so we're in good hands and we're in good stead. So we're still looking to raise in seed. If anyone wants to come on board and chat, we're happy to, to work to that. Strategic partnerships and working together is all about who we are, collaboration. Right? That's right, mate. Yep. That's it. Sorry. All right. And the next one is Brandon from Orange Boot Road, uh, major sponsor of our awards that are on the 24th of August. Um, and also sponsored the piece of Bitcoin a couple of weeks ago as well. So, no, thank you so much for getting amongst the community, mate. Right? Thank you. All right, hi everyone. It's good to see so many uh, different faces and new people that I haven't met yet. So, if I haven't met you yet, come up and say hi. I want to meet you all. Probably can't do it tonight, but it's over the time, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm Brandon from Orange Group Road. Basically what we do, we have a team of um, about 14 people that specialise in different areas of crypto. Um, right from just signing new people up, noobs, you know, how to KYC, connect around account, all that stuff, how to set up a wallet, how to transfer it, all that stuff. All the way down to specialising in different, um, like liquidity providing, passive income, like Hex, Tezos, Ocean Buy, other projects, that sort of thing. We don't teach people to trade. Um, we teach people to invest, and then right down to the security of everything, and it's, it's basically one-on-one. -on -one. So it's like, uh, it's individualised. So we deal with people from Uber drivers to oil and gas guys, a lot of mining guys, uh, a lot of real estate guys, even sort of um, orange peel a few bankers as well, or traditional finance guys, so, and everything in between. So yeah, it's just a personalised service. And uh, we also have an academy, um, which uh, basically takes you through seven steps on on the different areas of, of crypto and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, that's about it, man. Um, pretty much it. So. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the course yet, give it a go and, and see what it's all about. Our next one is. You. That's it. So, if there's anyone in blockchain here that's a company that hasn't yes. now done it, there is. There's one. Okay. Come on. Come down. We're going to do 30 seconds from the crowd. If you're in blockchain, then come up and tell us what you're about in 30 seconds. And then after that, we can get on the piece. Does that sound good? Yes. yes. All right, first one. Let's go. Yeah, I've been in crypto for a very long time, as long as me. Yes, well, we met at uh, the Power Ledger launch in 2017, right. June 2017. I thought I was going to get three minutes actually. No, 30 seconds. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, the show is very Three minutes, he's got three <laughs> minutes. Everyone's got 30 <laughs> seconds. Have you all know that I um, <laughs> actually put on the first ever Bitcoin meetup in Perth? Um, but put that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Tesos is really. Um, a blockchain that is designed to upgrade itself um, and it's voted on democratically so you hold Tezos in your wallet you get to vote on who pays you your rewards um, uh, Tezos Bakers, so I run a Tezos Baker called Money Every Three Days um, go to moneyeveryfreedays.com to learn more about that and I like Tezos because it's basically like the underdog of the crypto um, ecosystem I think it's about yeah. in market cap it's going up, and it's the artist's blockchain. <laughs> so Peter wants to come up from Innovation Australia. Apparently, he's been knocked by Johnny. Come on, mate. Friend of mine, he runs Innovate Australia. So if you've got any new innovations 
in the blockchain space or what are you passionate about, you know? Innovation in general, yeah. But no, the special fuel. Yeah. Oh, hydrogen, yeah. So. Okay, so I, uh, Peter Kastrak, I'm uh, co-founder of Innovate Australia. I've been running for eight years. We actually organize events on blockchain with Johnny. Uh, he spoke at our events, I spoke at his events. And I uh, just, just want to let you know, in the near future, we're actually organizing uh, digital assets events. So, so uh, watch that space. We actually probably going to be advertising and Johnny can pass it on to you. So thank you. And this one, Martin, coming up, mate. Hi, welcome back. So Martin from One Brand is one of our corporate partners. Got him very early. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Doc. Thank you. Quickly, uh, look, we love supporting startups, innovative companies that because they often produce amazing ideas and great tech, but just fucking hopeless at marketing. And uh, so that's what we're good at. I'm not very good at coding, but I know how to put the messages together and build brand. But don't ask my word for it, or don't take my word for it. Ask the guys at Scoop Tips. Cheers. Alright, this one is Lawrence. Hello guys, I'm, I'm actually from Nextout, um, which is a guild of legal engineers. So we do the interface between the paper contracts and what's on the blockchain. And recently we've kicked up a new application called Kali, which allows you to create your own DAO legally, which means that you can buy property owned to it on blockchain within minutes. So unincorporated um, non-profits or something like a Swiss um, organization, we can do. So if you'd like to talk about law and blockchain, I'm here. Is there anyone else? Anyone Max at all? <laughs> Max, do you want to come up, mate? Come on. Hey. Yeah, I'm on the blockchain a long time with Johnny. I didn't done anything on blockchain, but I'm more focusing on media, how we can promote you, how we can brand you. I do photography, video production, I have mobile billboards, and all this stuff, if you're looking to brand yourself in Perk, let us know. Now I'm studying LinkedIn, where we can go further, Australia, over. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else? Anyone? Any takers? Anyone else that's got a startup they want to talk about? All right, so first event on Blockchain WA. Not bad? Yeah. Not bad? We got, you know, not bad. The first, uh, first event for PropTech, we didn't have a stage, so people were standing on the floor. We didn't even have a bar, we used a table. We, we had nothing, right? But we built it up to over 200. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Get out of here. They say if you put drinks on, they'll come, so that's, that's the secret, right? But I'm super excited to help Johnny here with Blockchain WA, and, and he's wanted to do this for a long time. I think, you know, do we agree that the timing is right? What, what, you know, what we also need to do is, is acknowledge you guys that are out there and, and having a go, um, and, and, you know, with some awards and, and, and um, yeah, celebrating your hard work and your commitment. So, on the uh, 24th of August, here at 5 o'clock, um, we will have the Orange Brick Road Blockchain WA Awards, and you can apply now. That's the announcement. The applications are open. So we have nine categories. We've got Innovator of the Year, Leader of the Year, Good of the Year, Global Go-Getter of the Year, National Achievement of the Year, Rising Star, Professional, Marketeer, and Member's Choice. And getting up here, um, you know, getting your things. So when we did this last uh, year uh, for PropTech, we had about 40 applications, and we had, you know, here or there about categories. Um, this year, we have we had 103 applications and National had 147. Every category was sponsored, and there's 18 categories, by very, very big companies. And that's in its second year. Now, maybe we can't do that for blockchain in its first year this year, but maybe we can do that next year. Definitely. 
So, that's about it. Now there's one last thing before we, we have some drinks and we have some, some nibbles. My background uh, is property, and in property sometimes you've got a couple of dollars to, to rub together. Now, me and uh, Johnny had a bet, and, and, uh, and he said, you'll be surprised by how many blockchain companies here and supporters of blockchain, they've got a, more dollars to rub together. And he said, we'll, we'll get $10,000 tonight, and I said, as if, if you do, I'll give you a carton of piss and I'll walk down St. George Terrace in a chicken suit. <laughs> so if you're interested in being a corporate partner or a member or getting involved in Blockchain WA, go see Johnny and get involved because this thing is going to be where it's at. Thank you for coming. Thank you.
Blockchain WA in three, two, one, go! 